don't make us who we are So I'll dream until I make it real And all I see is Hello, hello, hello. Happy New Year everybody We're actually recording this on New Year Yeah, New Year's Eve, it's New Year's Eve, oh my gosh So you're watching this on January the 2nd but today is New Year's Eve for Marin and I. So happy New Year, Marin. I love yes, you. Happy New Year. And I hope everybody had safe and fun celebrations mm -hmm. this past weekend, technically tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> and this year, this year, so 2023, what the guidance that I've been receiving from Spirit is that this is a year of change. Now, mind you, we could say that about many of these past years that we've been through there's been great change but there's a lot of change that we're going to experience as a collective and there are some things that we're going to see as a collective as well so I find that exciting um daunting in some ways too but that's okay um exciting and I know that Mary and I were just gently talking here about changes and excitement for this year and um, we've got lots of good things up our sleeve. A lot of it we don't even know yet. We just feel it. So we can't wait to share this year with you. And of course, 23, we add that together, we get five. And five is change. Oh. So, yeah. so we're, we're headed into the year. Oh, I hope I have it in me. Yes. I know change can be so... Um, I think of like, I think of something I heard yesterday about how, um, I mean, change creates momentum and like they refer to the tides and how the tides create change. They create life, they create momentum. And that, you know, when your life is not uh, peaceful, that doesn't mean that it's bad because right. life is not meant to be peaceful. You have to have these tides to create this change and have this chaos. It's just finding balance in the chaos. Yes. And um, that's hard. It is. So I hope I have it, it in. Is. It is. But, you know, um, and Eric's just correcting me right now because he's saying, he goes, no, no, Michelle, he goes, did you have to say it's hard? He goes, you can acknowledge that it's challenging. But he says, also remember that as you grow, as your vibration expands, it becomes easier to find the calmness within chaos. That's true. Because... That is we have it within us. Our consciousness expands. So the things that we may have struggled with in the past, we have let go of and we don't seem to struggle anymore. And I know that you've experienced this. I've experienced this. There's things that I used to get very caught up in and cycle in or have a very hard time letting go that don't even seem to phase me anymore. And with that, of course, there are new things. Because as we grow, you know, we come upon new desires, new challenges. But what Eric is saying is the thing is, is as our consciousness expands, as our vibration expands, what we're moving into is more of our choice because we're choosing. So we're working through things that may be challenging, but it's a good challenge. It's a good challenge because we know it's bringing better into our life. So there's always yeah. tools that we can use to help us through that. But so what have we got on the agenda for the new year conversation today? Well, you know, I think with the new years, we're always making resolutions. We're trying to find out ways to start the year off right. And so I was thinking, what can I do spiritually to start this year off right? Are there things that you do every year at the beginning of the year? Are there things we should be doing um, at the beginning of this year. So I had, um, while well, you think of yours, I had a friend email me, um, something that she does that she passed along that I thought was beautiful. And I don't, don't want to like mumble her words here. So hold on. She says, um, that you write down on a piece of paper, what or whom you're ready to let go of in your life. That's taking your energy that you no longer want to supply to like limiting beliefs, circumstances, people who feed on your energy and don't return it and put that in. Mm -hmm. And then also what you want to make room for and receive. 
Mm-hmm. And so um, list that on a piece of paper mm-hmm. and then, you know, a new habit, uh, being healthier things. And she says, be as specific as possible and then put it in, you know, um, over fire and burn it. Yep. So I thought, I like that. That's I, nice. I, I like, like that too. The, I am manifestations, yep. but it's been like different thinking. Like, what do I have room for? What do I not have room for in my energy yes. field? Anymore? Yes. It's but, taking, um, um, that's like taking stock of where you're at. Um, that's really looking at where things are at and, and using these this new energy because, you know, as we have new energy, when we have portals and different, you know, different dates, like the 11, 11, 11, and all these different dates bring in new energies. And so when we have a new year, we really do have a fresh start. And then we have a fresh start every morning, every day every second if we choose um but what i love about the new year is it's an opportunity that is a collective coming together so there's a heightened energy that is felt of oh, letting go of that year that is past and reflection and i think that reflection is something that is very important um everything in our life is cycles our relationships um everything that we go through spirit shows it to me in circles in cycles and so when we're looking at our past year what I like to do is reflect where have I been um not only what am I letting go of but what did I achieve what did I what did I do that I'm really proud of that I set out the, the year before you know um when I started 2022 what was I looking to achieve in this year and um, you know, what did I overcome? And I find that I no longer set myself up for these grandiose um, achievements. And when I say this, do I, as I go forward, and I mean consciously, as I consciously have walked forward in my path, yes, my, my things I desire for myself become bigger and bigger. But what I'm talking about is I have, say, bigger goals for myself that may take several years, but I also break things down into these smaller pieces, these smaller chunks that I can see that will help me in that bigger goal. And that that has been things like um, uh, one year, my goal, which I have stuck to very well, I can say is recycling. I had the oh, one yeah. year of that. You know, I probably spoke about that before, but I that was what I was going to do. I'm like, I am going to recycle. And I stuck to that. And, um, but we we actually do this as a family. We go around and, and Rob and I did this before we had kids, but we would talk about, you know, what are we grateful for? What, what do we have sitting here on New Year's Eve that we are together um, you know, often our health and um, we talk about the experiences that we had over the year, things like that. So the gratitude, the reflection, those are really big pieces. But I also do uh, a little bit of artwork and I draw my year. So I draw oh. into the year what it is that I would like to experience. And sometimes it's the feeling. Sometimes it's actually a drawing of me doing something specific that I want to do but I put that in there and I date it and I sign it and I let it go and then I might think about it once in a while occasionally I'll go back and reflect on it or I might have put something in there and then something happens in reality and I go oh my god and I go back and look at it and match it up but things like that those are the types of things that I do um I do always put a goal in front of myself that I find is manageable so my goal right now is reducing sugar so I'm not saying Michelle you cannot ever have sugar I know that sugar cutting sugar out of my diet is important but rather than set myself up for zero sugar I'm taking it in stages and I'm reducing my sugar so that's the goal I'm heading towards the bigger goal is natural sugar but i'm i'm working i'm working that direction 
Uh, oh, I say. <laughs> Eric's just saying, um, for everybody to um, uh, goal setting, um, and then giving ourselves obtainable goals, goals that are that are easier to achieve, and maybe goals that will take a little more work. Because if we put ourselves with all of these great big goals, and we don't have that sense of achievement it's going to be harder for us to achieve those goals. Um, that reminded me of um, such a big thought and you pat like we passed by. So let me think about it. Uh, it reminded me of, I was sitting here and you were talking about this and I just thought, gosh, I am so glad that we're talking about this today. I feel so grounded before we go off or shooting fireworks off and hanging out with friends tonight. And yeah. I just thought, I feel so grounded talking about this, like my future. And it really grounds me. It really makes me feel really good to like talk about my goals before this new year. And then it made me think about something you said, how it doesn't have to be every year. It can be every morning, every second, every whatever, you know? And so I think when I think about my goal, I'm really trying to live a conscious life being, you know, in the present moment and um, having maybe a moment in time where I just think, what are my intentions for today? Which would be like that small goal setting that you're talking about. Yeah. You know, what are my intentions just for today? Um, I think I talked to, I don't know, on air, off air, <laughs> a week ago, a month ago. I'm not really yeah. sure. But yeah. I told you that finding time to meditate has been so hard um, because like, I feel like I need to be like in this total Zen moment, you know, and it's like, I might only have five to 10 minutes driving between, you know, picking kids up from this and right. dropping them off that or cooking dinner or whatever. And so maybe that was like too big of a goal. And maybe I just need to just find a moment, take three breaths and say, yeah. what is my goal for today? Yeah. And I think that's like super manageable that I could do that. Like while putting my makeup on for, yes. um, work or something like yeah. that, yeah. or Eric just gave me a visual that I'm not going to say. Um, I know exactly. On the what toilet. He, I know exactly what he showed you because that's what he says to me too. That's exactly what he says. <laughs> and and my friend Helena that I do healing with, he's given her the exact same advice. So I know what you're talking about. Oh, it's funny. Yeah. So there's good advice. Um. But anyways, yeah, like just being more conscious by setting small goals and what's my goal for today. So. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. So that is what I'm going to try to do yeah. for this. Year. So I like, that. I like that. I like that too. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking that we could pull a couple cards for all those that are watching to see okay. what, what is coming up in the new year. Um, so as we do this, when we're pulling cards for a group and it's not like a, um, I don't know if anybody ever watches the pit card readings where you like, people put up on youtube they've got youtube channels that is like pick deck one pick deck two pick three what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a card for the collective and we'll see what comes out of it take what resonates leave what doesn't but in one way or another something should apply to you um because i feel very drawn to doing this so we'll see we'll see what comes out now, is this for the coming year or this is lessons learned from last year or what? Well, let's do both. Year? Let's do both. Okay. Let's do both okay. and see. Um, okay, let's do lessons. So, okay, we're, we'll pick out three. Okay. Um, so everybody, as you're watching right now, I want you to envision in your mind whether you would like, whether you feel called to card one, card two, or card three. Okay, so I'm going to pull card one right now. So this is uh, Lessons We're Achieved. Hmm? Sorry, we have to have that number in our head right now, or are you going to show us the backs of the cards and then we're picking the card? Well, I'm going to say, um, okay, so there's three cards coming out. So okay. think in your mind which card will be for you. Will it be card one? Will it be card okay. two? Or will it be card three? Now. Okay. You might Got be it. saying card one's going to be for me, but if you find that card two applies more to you, then go with okay. card two. Okay? okay. Well, here's card number one lessons learned from last year or from 2022 okay. relationships. Okay. Card number one relationships. So, what this card says is, I am attracted to those people who serve my highest good. And so, this would be exactly what you were just saying from your friend Marin that said, you know, I'm looking at the people in my life 
are there people in my life that maybe um, are no longer good for me? Am I maybe in relationships of any type that need to change? Um, you know, have I learned about the relationship that I'm in, the relationship with myself, the relationship with spirit, the relationship with my job, you know, the relationship with nature, with my pet, with my children. There's so many different types that we could go at. So, you know, congratulations to you if this is a lesson learned for you in 2022. So card number two for 2022. Drum roll, please. Ball. Okay. So here we go. I'm come. nervous because I number this two. Is my this is yours. Okay. <laughs> Failure. Okay, now listen, listen. So, yeah, so this is agree. this is a good thing though. This is a lesson. So I understand that a mistake is truly an opportunity to learn. That failure, there is no failure. That failure is a word that we associate as something negative, but it's not failure. What it is is it's attempting, it's growth that we go through experiences to learn so that we understand deeper about ourselves and about our situations. How else can we grow and decide and understand what it is that we desire and want unless we go through these opportunities or these situations in one way or another? So it's taking this word and changing the understanding of it. And that is that's, a powerful lesson. Yeah, that's, I wouldn't say my last, last year was a failure. I would say that every reading I had an opportunity to be faced with, oh my gosh, if I don't, you know, if I, what if I fail, you yes. know, and it's so intimidating. And then yes. there is such thing as failing because everything's a lesson. Yes. And, and that's, and that goes with the, what we've said before, nothing is happening to me. It's happening for me. And, oh, and, yeah. and really oh. the, um, you know, the, the true meaning of that is trust, trusting in the experiences and trusting that, um, you know, it's okay to feel like, you know, maybe we didn't do something to the degree that we wanted to, or maybe didn't have the outcome that we thought it would have. But can we look at maybe my expectations are there that maybe I'm I'm hard on myself. Maybe I'm being hard yeah. on myself. Maybe I'm being way harder on myself than I am to other people. And maybe I think there's expectations of me that truly aren't there. You know, so mm -hmm. it's really being able to let go of those things and be okay. So card number three, we have guilt. The lesson of guilt. So guilt is I release any beliefs that no longer assist in my soul's growth. And so this is something that, um, this is a challenging one for a lot of us to let go of, which is guilt. And sometimes guilt is something that we've done that we maybe regret. Maybe we feel that, you know, we shouldn't have done this. Um, sometimes it's feelings of what we thought we should have done. But sometimes it's feeling an energy or dissatisfaction within ourselves for something that is not ours to carry in the first place. We often carry things, um, responsibility, especially as empath. We carry a responsibility that says, you know, I am responsible for this person. I am responsible for this other person's feelings. I am responsible for what I think I should have done that I didn't. And oftentimes it's the discernment of what is mine? What is my responsibility? What is not my responsibility? So if that's something you've worked through, know that the pulling of these cards means you successfully learned these things in this year. This is not saying that you still have this. You've learned these things. So congratulations. So for the coming year, I will pull a card. And I'm going to pull, um, I'm going to quickly pull three cards again. I'm going to do it like this. One, For the coming year, card number one pickers is perseverance. The lesson to continue going. The lesson to, I know I can do whatever I set my mind to. And to know that 
if you continue to go, whether that is renew, renewing and rejuvenating yourself each moment of each day, waking up with a fresh start, a fresh perspective, no matter what happens, if you're able to set one foot in front of the other, and some days are just going to be days where you might need to go back to bed, and that's okay. But as long as at the end of it, you keep going forward, perseverance will always get you to where you need to go. So that was my card. And that's very funny that my comment was like, I don't know if I can deal with the change. <laughs> perseverance. Worry. The lust of worry for number two. So worry, I am learning that worry does not change an outcome. Worry, now this is, I always find this very interesting. Worry is um, when we feel fear or concern of an outcome, it comes from being attached to an outcome that we want to go a certain way and where there's fear that it will happen in a way where we feel we cannot make it happen or we're attached to it happening in a way that doesn't bring pain because worry is what we connect ourselves to to avoid pain to avoid discomfort to avoid emotional upset and so worry is also an um something that we attach ourselves to that makes us feel like we're doing something so if i worry then i feel like i'm I'm helping this outcome. I feel like if I worry hard enough, it's not going to happen. But in, t in turn, when I worry, what I'm doing is I'm continuously going over the outcome that I don't want, which in physics and in universal law is actually drawing that experience towards you. So yes. when your worries occur, you know, you want to look at that and say, now, is there something I can actually do about this right now? Do I have anything within my control that I can change this? If it's no, then that's when you go to the practice of being let, letting go of the outcome. And, you know, there's many tools that we've talked about before that you can use to help to go through that. If there's something you can do, do it. But worry itself by going over things and over things and over things, you're never going to get the answer for it. If you let go, if you don't have an answer to something, if you let go of it and you work on your vibration, sometimes you need a nap. Sometimes it's getting your mind off of it. Sometimes it's the actual acceptance that, yes, this is a possibility. Yes, this could happen. But there's nothing I can do right now to change that outcome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it up to my angels, to the spirit. And I'm going to ask them to help bring me peace. I'm going to choose peace in this moment because I know by doing that, the answers that I need will come at the right time. So there's something that you can do because worry will do nothing but create more worry for you. And number three, indecision, which is a big lesson here. I use my intuition in all aspects of life. So indecision is really when we're not grounded and actually goes back to worry. When we try to figure something out and we're like, well, do I do this or do I do this? I don't know if this is right, the right decision or this is. There's a temptation for people to go around and ask everybody, what's your opinion? What do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? And that usually ends up creating more um, confusion and more of a, I now I really don't know what to do because we can get so much in our mind that mm -hmm. we make ourselves tired and exhausted and it becomes bigger than what we need it to be. So the very first impulse that you get in making any decision is generally the impulse that is heading you in the right direction. Even if that's hard, even if that means it might be a little more work, even if that means it might end up that you have to let go of something that is not comfortable. Practicing being able to make good decisions for yourself is practicing listening to your intuition in all ways in your life, not only when you have big decisions to make, but to practice using your intuition for small things. Practice hearing your own gut, listening to your own inner voice is the 
left road better than the right road? Is this box of cereal healthier than this box of cereal? It's asking yourself questions, asking your inner self questions and practicing that intuition. And, you know, the one thing that can be, um, and I, and I find this with teaching a lot is that there's a habit that happens with many people. And, and this is part of why Mary and I do this as well, is that we can look at other people that are intuitively reading and connecting with spirit. And there's like this expectation that I need it to look this way for it to be successful. And that can create an impatience of working with our intuition and wanting it to just be from here to here, wanting it to be, um, well, if I don't hear it loud enough, then it's too hard. I can't do it. And then that ends up relying on other people. Well, other people are great. And having the advice of somebody trusted is great. But at the end of the day, you are the only one that knows you as well as you. And so there really is no shortcut to learning how to follow your own intuition. It's actually doing it. The commitment of doing it. And there mm -hmm. is no shortcut to waving a magic wand over somebody and saying, and now you have the magic of the intuition. We all have an intuition. We all have inner guidance. There's not one person in this world that does not have it. But we do have it at varying degrees to each other. Mm -hmm. And so your best thing to do over this year, if this is your card, is to practice using your inner guidance in many different ways and get into the practice of it being part of your daily experience not only when you have crisis because if you're using your intuition or trying to use it when you're only in crisis you're not going to hear it clear enough because your mind is going to be louder than what your intuition is so you want to build that muscle on a regular basis and then you'll find when situations come up that are a bit more challenging, you're going to have a, a, a easier time hearing that intuitive voice. You're going to have an easier time feeling it because it doesn't go backwards. It only grows bigger. So, and there we that. go. Yeah. So thank you. Michelle. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm so happy Marin to have another year and to be going into 2023 with you and all the things I know that we're going to do. And thank you everybody for joining us and being on this journey with us. We're so excited to see where this takes us. Um, I do feel that we're going to be having some guests join us at some point in this year. And okay. um, we're going to do some more exciting things. And um, we hope and wish for you to have a safe, happy and healthy new year and we will see you again next monday sounds good thank you everyone so much thank you happy everybody new year. happy new year love you